Did you collect Beanie Babies? I did not collect Beanie Babies. Well, I did. <sighs> oh dear. If you weren't alive to remember the Beanie Baby craze of the 1990s, you were a lucky soul, because holy shit, was that a bad, dark, and crazy ass time. Amazingly, the entire craze can be traced to a single decision made by one man, the creator of Beanie Babies in the first place, Ty Warner. How would you describe Ty Warner? As a reclusive, eccentric asshole, basically. Um, he was noted for his perfectionism and created Beanie Babies while working as a toy salesman in the 1980s, which he was apparently all kinds of godlike at. And he would turn up to sales and pitch meetings wearing, and I'm not making this up, a long fur coat while holding a pimp cane. That's just, the, I told you he was eccentric, and that's, yeah. I don't know what the purpose of that is, other than like, you know, just asserting dominance, I suppose. But, but I'll be honest, if I was going to a pitch meeting and I sat down and a guy walked in, in full pimp regalia, with like Return of the Mac playing in the background or something. I'd, I'd stay for a minute just to hear what he had to yeah. say. A meticulous tinkerer, Ty Warner reportedly spent endless hours just meticulously changing every aspect of his Beanie Baby creation from the placement of their cold, dead, lifeless eyes to where their spots appeared. The problem was, he would do this even after a given Beanie Baby had been released and put on the market. So why would Ty Warner want to re like tinker something that's already been released? Uh, because he wanted to recall the products he was tinkering with to release like you know the better updated version. And for people who don't know much about marketing or business, that's a, a really fucking bad idea, especially with something that's supposed to be collectible. Um, and Ty Warner heroically ignored this advice when he recalled a peanut called Elephant, seen here, to change its coloration somewhat to be a slightly lighter shade of blue shown here. And um, obviously, he was very aware that people were going to be all kinds of pissed about this because Beanie Babies were marketed as being collectible. Yeah. And people are going to be pissed off if you randomly take one off the market for such a petty and stupid reason and they can't now buy it. So what he did is he sat down and he thought, how about I change the word recall to retire? And he issued a little press statement for like, you know, the people who gave a shit saying, Peanut has been retired. And he noticed that when he made this announcement, the price of peanuts on the Beanie Baby Black Market, a phrase I'm coining and trademarking right now, um, tripled almost overnight. But there was nothing different about the new peanut? No, it's just release. a different colour. Well, there was nothing different about it. But Ty Warner observed with quiet intrigue, like the changing of the word recall to retire, like planted the idea in people's heads that the old peanut was rare and he watched as basically blind speculation saw the price of peanuts increase and increase and increase. And it would later turn out that it was fueled almost entirely by people who wanted to sell their Beanie Babies because this is true, the woman who literally wrote the book on the value of Beanie Babies admitted after the fact, I just made up the cost. I would pick a random Beanie Baby, usually one that I owned or wanted to sell, and just release a newsletter saying, this one is worth this much money because it's rare, even when it wasn't. And she would watch as the price on things like eBay rose to match her estimation. An estimation, remember, she pulled completely out of her ass. It was a speculator's market being fueled by people hustling like motherfuckers. And Ty Warner got in on the hustle. What do you mean he got into the hustle as well? He started making shit up too, and he would release like cryptic messages to the press, like, you know, suggesting that maybe stocks of a specific Beanie Baby might be running out while simultaneously just ordering millions of them from China. And what he would do as well, he would micromanage um, like, you know, where deliveries went and would ensure that like, maybe, maybe a couple of hundred would go to this one store, but then I'll send like 400,000 like, across the country to like, you know, artificially plant the idea in people's minds that this Beanie Baby was rare, when in reality there were millions of them just in stores thousands of miles away. And he would do that like, on both sides of America. So like, people in one side of America were seeing like, well, this Beanie Baby's rare, it must be worth a lot of money, when in reality there were like, thousands of them on the other side, and they similarly had Beanie Babies that there were thousands of in that part of America, but like, in, in lesser supply, and they thought the same thing. They've been waiting hours for Coach House gift store to open. I like the duck. What we got? Two raccoons, two skunks, and two spiders. I see you have to admit they're cute. To me, it is amazing because... Yeah. 
you, uh, you, we did this article, we did this video today because you told me I collected Beanie Babies. Yeah. And you know, so you must know like how crazy it got. Did you ever experience any of like, no, the madness that was Beanie Babies? I wouldn't really call it madness because when I, when I was obsessed with them, I was really young and I didn't really care. You I just, I just, oh, I just collected you... them as in like, because I thought they were cute and I just wanted one of each animal. There it is, yeah. And I used to name them my own name. Yeah, it's like, yeah, fuck you, it's not I Peanut. I, yeah, I wouldn't like, I wasn't really one of those collectors that buys it for value or whatever. I just wanted loads of, because I like, I'm a big animal lover. Right, so do you not have to like, deal with then the crazy people who would kick the shit out of each other to get them? I love this story because of all the crazy stuff that happened. Like um, One of my favourite aspects of it is that McDonald's did a Beanie Baby tie-in with Happy Meals. Yeah. And people, obviously, fueled by stories that certain Beanie Babies were selling for thousands on eBay, would go into McDonald's, buy 40 Happy Meals, and just put them straight in the bin, and then go through the Beanie Babies. Or they would like attack members of staff to try and get Beanie Babies from behind the counter. And they had to make deliveries of Beanie Babies under armed guards. And there is even a photo out there, and this is fucking amazing to me, of a divorced couple sat on the floor of a court divvying up their Beanie Baby collection under the watchful eyes of a judge to make sure they're not ripping each other off because they deem that to be their most valuable asset. Because, oh yeah, people stake their life on these things. People invested their life savings thinking that one day these Beanie Babies will be worth a fortune. And the only people who really made any money off it were the people saying they're going to be worth a fortune, like Ty Warner and that lady who ripped everybody off. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to sell mine now, and but, it's just no way yeah, because there are millions of them. Like, and I said, Ty Warner knew about this, and he would periodically just say, "Oh, this one's not being made anymore," while secretly ordering hundreds of thousands from China and send them overseas. Because yeah, people would go to foreign countries to buy Beanie Babies. People would get on a plane, fly over to another country, buy Beanie Babies in the airport, and then fly back. Because they would hear a rumor on a message board saying something like, "Oh yeah, this rare Beanie Baby was a delivery of it in the United Kingdom." So we'd get a plane over there. People would run into stores and just like sweep everything onto the floor and search all the Beanie Babies and like body check children out of the way to get them. But we've not even got to the best part yet because what is the most iconic aspect of the Beanie Babies? It's the uh, TY tag. The you little keep tag. It in pristine condition. Yes. Which you could buy the uh, yeah. plastic oh, you covers. Know about them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Pe the people started selling little covers for the tags to keep them pristine because obviously you can't buy a beanie baby with a broken tag and there are stories out there of like from kids who had parents who sucked like their college funds into this shit saying like oh when, as a kid I accidentally ripped the tag off a beanie baby and my mum went mental. Like, and there are people out there now to this day who still think these things are going to come back and be worth a fortune. Uh, it's so, like there are so many stories of people who like invested their entire life savings into these things. It's not even funny. I've had mine about twenty years. And they'll never be worth anything because yeah. it's a, it was a speculator's market, and obviously we didn't have the internet back then, or it wasn't as big a thing. So people couldn't just check and say, "Oh, well, a store in Arizona got a delivery of eighty-five thousand of these things." It's not, they're not rare, it's just they're just not being sold here. And it was all just artificial scarcity manufactured by the manufacturers to sell more of these things. And that to me is so funny. So how does something as huge as this craze disappear overnight so quickly? Well, it has a lot to do with the fact that eventually people just stopped giving a shit. It got to the point where it was only people trying to buy and sell and collect Beanie Babies that were really buying them. So, so basically it was all people buying Beanie Babies and then selling them to each other and then trying to flip them to sell. So it got to the point where the only people who gave a shit were the people who didn't want them to collect but to sell. And Ty Warner um, noticed this and he realised that you know, like the game was up when he announced that he was going to retire every single Beanie Baby currently in circulation and the price of none of them rose in any significant way. And he went, oh fuck. The, gate, the, like, the jig is up, we can't do this anymore. Which was also noticed by like, you know, collectors of Beanie Babies who realizing that, oh shit, these things aren't worth anything anymore, no one's buying them, flooded the market with all theirs to try and get rid of them quickly, which caused the price to plummet and it has never recovered since. Because obviously what's the first thing you do when you realize, oh shit, they're not uh, sell, sell now to try and get rid of them, but everyone has the same idea, market's flooded, no more Beanie Baby craze, they're not worth anything anymore, to the point where Today, they're barely worth what they were when they were brand new in stores. 
and actual economists just study this going, yeah, it's a, it's a microcosm of just supply and demand and how it can really fuck you up if you try and like, you know, manipulate it to like, you know, such an absurd degree. But Ty Warner probably doesn't give a shit because um, the craze made him a multi-billionaire. You are a collector of Beanie Babies, and recently you were attacked by your, your zoo, your, your like, you know, menagerie <laughs> of Beanie animals when you went into your attic, if I recall correctly, yes? Yeah. So how many would you estimate you have in your house? Originally, I think... Originally? Be, be, well, before, because I've sold a few now. Yeah. Um, but I think before I sold any, I had about 260? That's an oddly maybe? specific number, which makes me think you know exactly how yeah, many you had. Yeah, um, there was a point where I did count all of them. So they used to sit um, on this massive shelf. <laughs> and they used to fall the down big, all the time. And the I, just, I thought, you know what, I'm going to count how many I've got. And I had about 200 odd. Oh, I think that. it was like 250, 270 range. Um, do you, have you actually made a profit on any that you sold? No. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and, like the, and I know someone's going to like come at me and say, well, I sold one for this much. And like, well done you. There are a few examples that I sell for several hundred, maybe a thousand dollars because they have like one of a kind, they've got misprints or people still say they think they're rare because no one gives a shit anymore. It's similar to like comics and all that stuff where there's so many produced that there's no value in collecting them anymore and it's fueled entirely by speculation. But I don't want to talk about that because that's boring. What isn't is you. <laughs> just these th What did you do with them? Like, did you just collect them or did you... I just, just collect them. Just on a shelf? Yeah. I used to, well, when I was really young, I used to play with them. Like, oh, you know, when I'm like six or seven years old. Do you ever throw them? Because they've got the solid um, beat, they hurt so much. Yeah. My brother <laughs> and me, we had one from like a gift from a holiday. So we used to wing those bastards so fast. We'd like push the beads around to put as many as we could into the legs oh, and throw yeah, like ninja I stars. So all the beads came out and they'd be like this basically, this bolo of beanie death. When I, yeah, when I was younger, me and my cousin used to play with them every week. And then we used to go to our grandma's and we used, I used to bring a bag full of our favourites. A bag. I can't talk though because I was that kid who had the stacker box full of cars. I, and I, I don't know, hot, is it Hot Wheels and Matchbox? Yeah. There's a, there's a really, really, and I think that's one of the few like toy markets where it's still quite valuable because they do release like rarer ones and there's still quite a lot of um, uh, like money to be made in that. But no, I just like you know, the, the 50 car set you'd get from like, uh, like Poundland with the cheap shit ones, yeah. the axles that broke me. We had a little hill in our back garden. And what we do is we'd roll the cars down, we'd stack up cars and like do destruction derby and make little ramps. Yeah. And then one year I got a fucking Tonka truck. And that thing was amazing because I would sit in the Tonka truck and go down the hill and just smash through all the shitty little plastic cars we got. And that was awesome. So I can't really talk and I just had I think I get hundreds of these little things. And I had my favourite, which is obviously the really heavy matchbox ones, or the ones from the Hot Wheels sets yeah. that we wouldn't send around the track because we were scared. Because they weighed so much that they wouldn't go very fast. And we'd what we'd do is you know the Hot Wheel launcher? Yeah. We used to get that and we'd get like a, like three pieces of straight track, hold the launcher under our arm and feed the cheapest cars we had into it and fire them like a gun. Did you ever have um one of those like, it's, I can only describe it as like a carpet, which was a road. Yeah, oh, that thing was awesome. Yeah, and I used to have one of those. And we had the Micro Machines cars. My brother had one shit like a truck that opened up into a city. And I had one shit that was shit like an army vehicle that opened up to a military base. And we'd set up all the Micro Machines, and then obviously Godzilla comes in. Then the Power Rangers come in. <laughs> so I love when you like combine toys as a kid. <laughs> He was like, oh yeah, look, here's like the little city and here's this little car driving around. Beep, beep, get your fuel. Like, oh no, dinosaur attack, no! Oh!